Hi guys, welcome to Counterpoints. My name is Connor, and today we're going to be breaking down Black Talon Episode 1, Reforged. It is set in the age of Segmar Realm, so it will be fantasy instead of science fiction, but the violence is solid and the plot is pretty good. I will be pausing intermittently to break down lore and observations, so if you want to watch the original, please go to Warhammer TV, and if you're in a non-service country, use a VPN. This episode is brought to you by Mastermind Models and Miniatures and Libra Demonica. Mastermind Models and Minis is an insanely talented paint studio out of Huntsville, Alabama, who do commissions domestically and internationally. So, if your pile of shame is weighing you down, be sure to check them out in the description below, and be sure to tell them that we sent you. Libra Demonica is an incredible Estonian-based third-party bits manufacturer who will absolutely take your models to the next level, so be sure to check them out as well. The Blight Kings set their sights on an outpost fortress. They plan to use the survivors to make plague carriers. The infected bear no sign of their curse, but the contagions they carry are lethal. Sigma's light and tears. They call them the Seeds of the Father. From the outpost, they can spread to the settlements to the north. The precise intent of our hunt? Slay Oromus as a source and slay any infected. And when will he reach the outpost? He already has. Neve Black Talon, our protagonist, is a Knight Zephros, the assassins of the Stormcast Eternal. Instead of using shadows and secrecy, the Knight Zephros deploy to the most dangerous battlefields with extreme precision to take out the most valuable targets of the Great Enemy. Much like Warhammer 40,000, the chief antagonist in the realms of Sigmar is Chaos, and like 40k, Nurgle is the god of rot. For those brand new to this setting, Warhammer Fantasy, now known as the Old World, died at the hands of Chaos, literally being ripped apart. Sigmar, the lightning god of order, saved as many souls as he could and with the aid of a dragon birthed a new series of realms that could host the reincarnated souls of the old world. While Sigmar was the chief steward of these kingdoms, the powers of chaos followed and pushed him back into the realm of heaven known as Azure. From this base, he launches mortal warriors and colonists along with their immortal guardians, the Stormcast Eternals. Chosen from the most valiant of mortal warriors, they can channel their god's lightning, bring his wrath to their enemies, and be reincarnated if slain. These powers, though, come at a cost.
Knight Zephros, Rostus, batters enemies and the gates of the fortress, channeling Sigmar's power through the hammer. It's clear from the well-placed sniper shots from Shikana that every blow and shot is done efficiently to allow the hunters to close with their target. The lightning burst from the chained arrows is an awesome effect that is metal enough to make me pumped about the setting and the potential for Warhammer TV as a product. Hendrik also sacrifices himself, showing that the Stormcast, while powerful, willingly die to accomplish the mission. Neve kills the Blight Lord and is resistant to Nurgle's rot, but not immune, succumbing to her wounds and is summoned back to Azure. Welcome home, Black Talon. Uh, <sighs> what do you remember? I remember... <laughs> Knee! Teeth of the dragon, it's good to see you. <sighs> oh. So this time it's me that Sigma's fire has taken. Maybe next time I pass through the lightning I will forget who all of you are. Thinking about it, maybe I already have. Maybe, maybe you have all been playing on my empty memory, and none of you are who you claim to be. Maybe I'm not even called Rostus, and was once a, a svelte king from the Lost Kingdoms. Tell me, wise old wolf, has the anvil stolen my throne or expanded my girth? <laughs> Without doubt, both. <laughs> <laughs> Each time the Stormcast dies, they are torn down to their atoms, transformed into the pure energy of lightning, and reforged back into existence. Each death costs them memories and can eventually cost them their dreams and change their personalities. It is part of the dark humor of the Stormcast that they are slowly being honed into pure weapons of war, losing what once made them human. It's a fate they claim to be honored to take part in, but you can tell that there are resentments for their higher path. does this feel like an ambush? Because it is. Your time might be better spent resting. I find I need less rest as... <sighs> as time goes on. As you die. As I am reforged. But yes, that too. You are 
trying to put it back together. <sighs> These memories. I images. Each time we pass through the lightning and wake on the anvil, we lose something. For you, it is the past. I remember, though. I remember you. I remember the precepts of the Black Talons, that we are Sigma's hunters, charged with slaying the enemies of order. <laughs> I remember the Auruk that you cut in two in the Nightspur and Shayish. All of it clear. How can I remember all of that and not know who I was? <sighs> the Celestial Order moves to a greater purpose. We cannot always see the patterns. But there's something there. On the edge of the dreams and memories, a, a shadow, like a shadow just behind me. I don't know if it was something about the hunt. We completed our hunt. You slew Orimos. There were no infected found. These dreams shall pass. It is happening again, isn't it? Neve, which bit of the past are you caught in now? I was just... How much did you lose this time? I didn't come to talk about that, Shukana. Oh, you didn't? Don't lie to me. You've come here, asking questions about what happened in the last hunt. Clearly, it is about your memory. I can remember. I'm fine. But you can't remember what happened three breaths ago. You don't want to know what I remember about the hunt. You're trying to put yourself back together. Perhaps I am. I have to. You always say that! Every time you come back from the anvil, it's the same. You're the Black Talon Prime. You decide how we execute the hunt. You die and lose memories because of the decisions you make. And what would you do? Sit on the top of a cliff for days, waiting for the perfect shot that never comes? We are Stormcast. Dead heroes chosen by Sigma to save the mortal realms. We have no other purpose. We do whatever it takes to win. It's not just about winning, Neve. It's about how we win. We don't have that luxury. There are too many threats. We strike with the tool that will get the job done. We get in and we get out. Get out? Just look at yourself. Here you are in the same broken loop, desperate to find a way back and arguing that any means justifies the end. If you can't see how foolish that is, what hope do we have? Death is the price we pay, and I pay it gladly. <laughs> gladly, huh? Too gladly, and without need. You think there's another way? I don't think it. I know it. But that would mean you couldn't die for your kills. So we will never know, will we? Why are you so angry? I'm not angry. I'm not angry. I'm afraid. Not of the enemy, not of death. Because we don't die. But we change. I fear what we may become. What did your reforging take from you? I don't dream anymore. That's what the lightning took. Shikana. I remember taking my shots. I remember my kills. That's all. By the time you reached the tower, I was already dead. Both Hendrik and Shikana relay what they've lost to Reforging and believe that what is troubling Neve is the same. Shikana also criticizes Neve for the way she conducts her hunts, being reckless with the lives of her charges. By embracing death so often, the warriors of the Stormcast are becoming less and less human, and Shikana notices that with each step, they become only warriors, no longer reflective of those they are charged to protect. Neve believes that the restless nights and nightmares have to do with the last hunt. Neve charges Lori, the mercenary elf wizard of their troop, to reach back into her memories and bring forward what is missing. Hendrix objects, believing that Neve is trying to recover memories lost to her in some desperate grasp at her humanity. As a veteran of the Stormcast, Hendrik has seen fellow warriors drive themselves insane, trying to recover their humanity, and ultimately, they're no longer reforged. Neve pushes past the objections and agrees to give Lori the elf whatever price is demanded at a later time. Do it. The 
up with someone else in the tower. You're the one who crossed the plateau. You look like you need some water. Fear not, it's clean. We need every sword out here. I have somewhere I need to be. Thank you. Hey! Hey! You'll die out there without water! Hey! No mercy then? No, not for you. Not now. I didn't want to hurt anyone. I fought to keep people alive. I fought for so long. Do you know how many of us have died trying to reclaim this land? The tribes don't get you. Hunger and disease will. We're supposed to be reclaiming this land, making it our own, but all it does is kill us and take our tears. No one ever promised it would be easy, only that it was necessary. He said it would end. All I needed to do was eat the fruit. No more hunger, no more thirst, no more suffering. You became the suffering. <sighs> I just wanted to go home. But that can't happen now, can it? And end every life within those walls? You're a seed of death. Lost and damned. Strange how you go from one to the other. Not strange. We are what we choose to be. Isn't that true? Before you, there's something he said when I told him I was going back to Hammerhall. He laughed. He said it, it didn't matter what I did because the horned shadow comes. Good night. what this threat is. It's dealt with. No need to risk taking such a trophy. Much lies beneath the surface of certainty. Take it. All right. What and where now? Home. The young warrior who took the rotten fruit is a tragic story. He is not chosen by Sigmar. He is just a sword arm to reclaim many of the lands infested with chaos. Likely a conscript, he suffered for years away from home, and when he was mortally wounded, he took the easier path. Instead of being spiritually lost, he is now damned and his soul pledged to the god of rot. The boons of Nurgle are you can no longer feel pain, thirst, or hunger, and if you are a steadfast warrior, you can become one of his champions, immortal but not invulnerable. The poor pawn was just a carrier of disease meant to infiltrate and infect a city of Sigmar, and in only a brief time has already killed dozens. Neve ends him, and for now, the immediate threat is over. Neve and the Stormcast celebrate as best they can before Fawn delivers an old battered axe, reopening the mystery of who Neve Blacktalon is prior to her reforging. I'll admit, I have a mixed reaction to this episode. The action is solid, the plot is good, and the themes are great, but I actually cut up this episode and reordered it into a more chronological format because it heavily relied on jump cuts, flashbacks, and portal magic. I know this is to communicate the fractured nature of the Stormcast's soul, but after Angels of Death, it just feels like needless padding. The characters can be confused and disoriented, the viewers shouldn't be. That being said, any excuse to watch Nurgle cultists get ripped to pieces is a good time for me. So if you enjoy my breakdowns, like, share, and subscribe. Leave a comment. If you can't think of anything else to say, post comment for the comment gods below. I'll salute you in real life with an Aquila, but in the comments section I'll reply with an 07 saluting you for your service. 
Consider joining our Patreon and Discord link below or support our channel sponsors. I appreciate you. I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.